Hello, everybody. Welcome to Summer Reading. This year's theme is Tales and Tales. And today, I, Miss Kayla, have some tales for you about animals with tales. All of your favorite youth services librarians like Miss Chinasa and Miss April and Miss Julie and Miss Stephanie will be presenting virtual story times that you can catch right here on YouTube every other Monday this summer. But you can also catch us live in person. Miss Chinasa is presenting Growing a Reader Story Times at the Vale Urban Farm. She's presenting those on Saturday mornings at 11. They start at the end of July and go through mid-August. You can find those on Event Keeper or at scpl.org under Events and Registration. You can also catch pop-up story times. Those will be announced on our Facebook group, and they'll be announced two days ahead so you can register and see us at pop-up story times. At our early literacy story times, we always emphasize the five early literacy practices. We're going to spend some time today reading and singing and talking. Hopefully, you'll do some writing or some drawing of animals with tails and some time playing, too. So come along and join the fun. Let's get started. Let's get started today with our Hello and How Are You song. We'll sing in English and French and Spanish. There's some very simple hand motions. Just follow me. The words are on the bottom if you want to sing along. Ready? Hello, hello, hello and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine and I hope that you are too. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Now everybody shake your tail, shake your tail, shake your tail. Now everybody shake your tail, come on and shake your tail. Bonjour, bonjour, a petit mot d'amour. Bonjour, bonjour, à moute pour les jours. Bonjour, 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 comment ça va? Ça va, ça va, j'espère toi aussi. Now everybody stomp your feet, stomp your feet, stomp your feet. Now everybody stomp your feet, come on and stomp your feet. Hola, 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 ¿y cómo estás? Estoy bien, muy bien, y espero que tú también. Hola, 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 ¿y cómo estás? Estoy bien, muy bien, y espero que tú también. Now everybody wave hello, wave hello, wave hello. Now everybody wave hello, 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 hello. Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me for story time. Let's look at our books. When you think of animals with tails, what kind of animals do you think of? Hmm. Dogs have tails. What else has a tail? Mm-hmm, great ideas. Cats have tails, monkeys have tails, horses, cows, pigs have tails. An animal that I think of as having a tail is a bird. Birds have feathers that make their tail feathers. I'm gonna start off with a book all about birds showing their tail feathers. This is Bird Show. I'm also gonna read to you today, Tushes and Tails. <laughs> and part of the Alphabet Tale, which is a great guessing book. 
One early literacy tip I'd like to share is that when you're reading, one thing you can do is put your finger under the words and follow along as you read them. I sport a vest that is dappled with dots. That'll clue your child in and keep them focused. So let's get started. Bird Shell is written and illustrated by Susan Stockdale and published by Peach Tree Publishers. Let's see all these beautiful birds dressed up in their fanciest feathers and putting on a bird show. I soar through the sky and like birds everywhere, I'm decked out in feathers and wear them with flair. I boast an outfit of every hue. Hmm, is that a word you know? Hue? Hue is another word for color. So this duck boasts an outfit of every color. Lots of bright colors on their feathers. Let's practice with our fingers. Can you follow along with me? My coat has one color. My jacket has two. One color, two colors. I flaunt a full skirt of milky white lace. Mm. This beautiful bird has mostly one hue of feathers. Right. Mostly milky white. My apron is yellow. My dress has a face. Hmm. We'll come back to this bird. I sport a vest that is dappled with dots. Hmm, a vest dappled with dots. Can you see the dots on that bird's feathers? I see many black dots. I bet you can too. My suit has white speckles. My headdress has spots. Ooh, there's more spots. I flash a tailcoat with curly Q flips. Ooh, look at those feathers. They're curled up. Those are fun tail feathers. My train has two paddles. My fan has sharp tips. Those feathers are very pointed and sharp at the ends. I don an elegant, free-flowing gown. Ah, look at those beautiful feathers flowing almost like a gown. My scarf stripes are curvy. My plumes form a crown. All of us dress in our own special way. <laughs> Those long, long tail feathers, those are special. And put on a fashion show every day. Hmm. Look at those macaws, so brightly colored across the blue sky. Birds are the only living animals that have feathers. Most females have dull colored feathers and fewer markings, so predators won't spot them while they care for their chicks. Most males feature brighter feathers to attract a female mate, as females prefer partners with more vibrant colors. Plain or showy, birds provide a dazzling display. 
In the back of Bird's Show is a key for all the birds that we saw on the pages. Now I wanna show you a couple photographs from the nature picture library of the birds that we saw in Susan Stockdale's book. So I will start with this one here. This bird is called a superb bird of paradise. And here's what it looks like in nature. Can you see its feathers that look almost like a face? Me too. And that beautiful, beautiful blue feather color is vibrant and gorgeous. The next bird I wanna show you in nature is this one here. This bird is called the Royal Fly Catcher. And I love the spots on its headdress. I think they are majestic. So this is a headdress of feathers. And here is the royal flycatcher. Hmm. Beautiful, huh? And the last one I wanna show you was this bird here called the marvelous spatula tail. The marvelous spatula tail looks like this in nature. It has those beautiful feather paddles on its tail feathers. Well, thanks for exploring those birds with me. And again, that resource is called the Nature Picture Library. There's lots of great nature photographs that you can look at online if you want to see more birds or more animals. Let's sing a song together. All right, everybody, the song that we're going to sing is an action song. Can you find a couple shakers or maybe some rhythm sticks that you can hit together for our song? While you're looking for those, let me show you a book that you might like. Ben Rothery's Hidden Planet is all about secrets of the animal kingdom. So if you really love animals, if you want to know more, about any kind of animal, about bugs, about octopuses, about leopards. This is a great book to check out from the library. Again, it's Hidden Planet by Ben Rothery. All right, the song that we're gonna sing is Hop a Little, Jump a Little, one, two, three. We're gonna do it twice. So follow me, I'll go nice and slow. First, we're gonna hop which is on one leg. Ready? So let's hop a little, then jump a little. One, two, three. Run a little, skip a little, tap one knee. Now bend a little, stretch a little, nod your head. Yawn a little. Sleep a little, go to bed. Once more. Ready? Let's hop first. Hop a little, jump a little, one, two, three. Run a little, skip a little, tap one knee. Bend a little, stretch a little, nod your head. Yawn a little. Ooh, sleep a little, go to bed. Great job. All right, let's read our next book. The next book we'll read together is titled Twishes and Tales by Stephanie Frattini and published by Sterling Publishing. This book features animals that have tushes and have tails. Can you think of an animal that doesn't have a tail? Hmm, who does not have a tail? Does a fly have a tail? Does an octopus have a tail? How about a frog? Does a frog have a tail? That's a couple I can think of, but I bet you can think of more. Let's look at some more animals that do have tails. This is a guessing book. 
Can you tell what animal tail that is? Did you guess giraffe? Very good, that's a giraffe's tail. There's some information in this book about giraffes, but one thing I'll say about them is that its tail has wavy strands of hair that almost touch the ground. It's long tail giraffe. Whose tail is that? Did you guess pig? If you did, you were right. <laughs> they have curly tails, don't they? Giraffes have straight tails and pigs have curly tails. Whose tail is that? It sure looks like a zebra, doesn't it? But it's not a zebra. This animal is called an okapi. And an okapi is not a zebra, but it's a cousin to a giraffe. That's its closest relative. And it has stripes like a giraffe, but it's actually closer related or straps like a zebra, but it's actually closer related to a giraffe. Whose tail is that? Can you tell? It's a rhino. It's a rhinoceros tail. It does almost look like a dinosaur, doesn't it? Hmm. Whose tush and tail feathers are those? You know, gobble gobble. Yeah, it's a turkey! <laughs> and how about that swishing tail? You know that one? I bet you did. That's a cow's tail. It's very active. As they eat, cow tails swing and twitch to swat away annoying flies. Whose rump is that? That is the tush of a, an ibex. It's a wild goat. Whose tail is that? That's a bushy tail. I bet you recognize that one. We have those animals around here. Mm-hmm. The squirrel. All right, we've got two birds on these pages. Whose tail feathers are those? Mm-hmm, quack, quack, a duck. And how about these tail feathers? This animal is more rare. This is a stilt, and a stilt is a bird with long, skinny legs that almost look like stilts. Sometimes people will walk on stilts to make them tall. This bird is called a stilt. Oh, we've got one more bird. Whose tush is that? Ostrich, very good. How about this tush? Who does that belong to? Bumblebees. Yes, the information on this page says the fuzzy rump belongs to a bumblebee. They fly around and collect pollen from flowers only the female bumblebee has a stinger. She uses it to protect her nest and herself. Oh, whose tail is that? This is an animal that we do have around our part of North America in the Northeast. It's a groundhog. It's not Groundhog's Day today, but that's a groundhog's bushy tail. Whose tail is that? You know this one, I betcha. It's a deer. You can see those spots on its fur. Can you tell whose short little tail that is? Did you guess it right? It's a penguin. And from the cover, whose tail is that? Yes, a kitty cat. The cats use their tails to communicate. The words say when a cat holds its tail up straight, everything is fine. If a cat weaves its tail like a snake, or if the hair on its tail is all puffed up, 
That cat is angry. So sometimes a tail can tell you something about how that animal is feeling. And then at the very back, there's more tushes and tails to guess who those belong to. Thanks for reading Tushes and Tails with me. I hope you had fun figuring out what animals, tails, and tushes those, those were. We have more interactive and guessing books at the library. If you ask a librarian, we'd be happy to help you find some. I have one more fun rhyming guessing book for us today. This is called The Alphabet Tale by Jan Gartner and illustrated by Muriel Batherman. This book is published by Green Willow Books. And The Alphabet Tale, like I said, is a rhyming book, which are great books to pick. And if you listen closely, the rhyme will give you a clue as to which animal each tail belongs to. I'm gonna skip around this book. I'm not gonna go through the entire alphabet of animals. But here, we're gonna start with letter A. Sharp eyes and sharp teeth. Run first and look later. This is the tale of an... Do you know whose tale that is? Run first and look later. This is the tale of an alligator. Did you guess it? Good job. All right, letter B. In building dams, she's a great believer. This is the tale of a busy. She's a believer. This is the tale of a busy beaver. Beavers do have very busy tails, don't they? Flat tails that they use to help them swim. All right, let's do letter C next. This is an animal we saw before in the last book. You could probably guess it already just by maybe looking at that tail. But the word clues are, softly she walks, pitter pat. This is the tail of a meowing. Mm hmm cat. At parties, you pin it on him. Your blindfold won't let you see. This is the tale of a braying. Hmm. The rhyming word is see. Your blindfold won't let you see. This is a tale of a braying. Donkey. <laughs> All right, let's do letter E next. He has two tusks. He has a trunk. He's big and he's intelligent. This is the tale of an... Let me hear you say it. He's intelligent. He's an elephant. <laughs> Great job. I'm going to skip ahead. I want to skip to letter M. Swinging high in the branches, she's playful and spunky. This is the tale of a mischievous, you know it, monkey. <laughs> oh yes, those monkey tails definitely help them out with swinging through the branches. All right, I'm going to skip ahead to letter O. We saw this animal in the last book too. Do you remember? We saw its its tail feathers with his head in the sand. Now, which end is which? This is the tail of a leggy. Which is which? This is the tail of a leggy. You got an ostrich. Yeah. Now, I'm going to jump ahead to an animal that I think some of you really like a lot. It's letter you got it. He's found in make-believe land. On his forehead is a long horn. This is the tale of a unicorn. Yes, he does have a long horn on his forehead. And 
And we will end with letter Z. This is the last tale. Whose tale will it be? To end the alphabet with a Z? It's got to be our friend Zebra. And that's the end of the alphabet tale. But you can check this book out of the library if you want to see what the other animal tales are for the letters we didn't read together. It's okay to skip around books, especially if you're having your baby help you turn the pages or your little one turn the pages. Some pages you'll miss and that's okay. It's so wonderful to share books together. We have one closing song. Grab those shakers. And then we'll end with bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. If you haven't signed up for Tales and Tales, the summer reading challenge, you know, you can get prizes for reading over the summer. Go ahead and sign up. Click on over to scpl.org. Click on the Beanstack link and you can sign up online and start logging some reading and maybe win some prizes this summer. But let's sing Bread and Butter, Marmalade and Jam. One, two, three. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as soft as we can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as loudly as we can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as slow as we can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as quick as we can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as deep as we can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as squeaky as we can. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thanks to the Friends of the Library for supporting library programs. Now go sign up for Tales and Tales. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.